Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, which was my science project, the 1985 comedy. On account of being so busy, you know, I had a long workout, and not only that, but we were celebrating my brother's graduation. And congratulations to him on earning his bachelor's degree at his university. So good luck with that. So I had a chance to watch some movies that came out recently and one of them turned out to be the film that came out on March 11 of this year which I've been looking forward to it called 10 Cloverfield Lane which is a follow-up to the 2008 successful found footage film that's basically a monster movie like Godzilla meets the Blair Witch Project yep a found footage film where you just have lots of shaky cams going around back and forth side to side that just got me completely nauseous and queasy yeah, this is why I was not a huge fan of found footage movies because of the shaky cams but I really enjoy that film it was directed by Matt Reeves who later went on to direct the American remake Let Me In with Chloe Grace Moretz from Kick-Ass and Cody Smee McPhee from the film The Road who went on to do the voice acting in the film Paranorman and I remember seeing the trailer of the film when I went to go see Transformers back in 2007 it didn't have a title yet but they did show a scene where they show um, basically what it is they had one guy who was just about to go to work because they, they were having a celebration for him to go into Japan. You know, he was doing some business and you know, maybe have fun or so. So suddenly there was an attack that was about to arrive in New York. And that's where you spotted uh, the head of the, uh, the Statue of Liberty that's being thrown into the streets. And there was like major chaos that was about to happen. Well, they couldn't find a title for the film until late 2007 when they finally got the title Cloverfield. And there you go. By producer J.J. Abrams. So I guess they just wanted to have a straight up film that's a mix between the two. Yeah. And, it, and of course they don't want to give away the, the entire uh, secret behind that one creature. And I'm glad they didn't go for that, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, you had to see it for yourself. But I know, it was pretty hard to watch uh, having to go through it. But I really did enjoy it. Uh, it was definitely a very successful film. Now, this movie originally was going to be titled The Cellar. Because it's basically set inside a bunker. After some possible attack that was going to happen, or something suspicious. Like like an apocalypse that's about to appear yeah, in some ways but then they had to change the script and I know originally it was going to be called Valencia too but they went ahead and just called it simply 10 Cloverfield Lane and it had um, a stellar cast and the fact that it's a straight up film and it's not filled with shaky cams all around it just has some beautiful cinematography that's done in one film camera that's like 35 millimeter or or even you know 70 millimeter what whatever they choose but it's basically 35 all done digitally and you have um, actors like Mary Elizabeth Winstead a very wonderful actress also very underrated we went on to do films like Sky High, as well as Final Destination Free. And she was very good in that film. Even though I thought it was just going to be a, a stupid sequel after the second movie uh, from the franchise. But it turned out to be quite decent, seeing it's the same director who did the first film. Yeah, a movie about, uh, about a bunch of teenagers. I mean, one of them actually had a permission that something bad was going to happen... Uh, while they were on the plane, like there's going to be a huge plane crash, and then 
then they discovered that uh, death was really um, really affecting everybody's uh, particular lives and they're trying to cheat death so that way they don't end up getting killed yeah. but the third film was basically focusing on a roller coaster ride and that's a good choice because you know usually roller coaster rides are always very scary even though it's fun <laughs> So they knew this was going to happen, but she did a very good job. I know she went on to do the remake of Black Christmas that's based on the film by director Barb Clark. It's a, it's a Christmas horror film. And she also did uh, the film Death Proof, which is part of Grindhouse, written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. You have a, a Kurt Russell in the film playing stuntman Mike, which I know Tarantino disowned that film. And she also played the film, and also she went on to play the, the love interest, Ramona Victoria Flowers, in the film Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And she was very good in that film, and plus, it's also one of my favorite comedies of that year. That was directed by Eager Wright, who gave us Shaun of the Dead. Hot Fuzz, and later The World's End, you know, with uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. <laughs> also has John Goodman, who has a lot of excellent roles in his career, and he did a very effective, creepy role in this movie. And also you got John Gallagher Jr., who did a film called Short Term 12. And you also have Bradley Cooper doing a voice of... Um, of Michelle's uh, fiance. So there you go. <laughs> Great cast. So let's get to the review. It stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead, John Goodman, John Gallagher Jr., Suzanne Pryor, and Bradley Cooper. It's written by Josh Campbell, Max Stuckin, and Damien Chazelle. And it's directed by first-time director Dan Treckenberg. The movie begins when a woman named Michelle, who's played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who had an argument with her fiancé Ben, who's voiced by Bradley Cooper, decided to pack up and leave New Orleans and drive through Louisiana till late at night, just when she was about to go to the gas station to get some gas. She turns on the radio to only hear a report that continuous blackouts are starting to happen in major cities. Being distracted by a call from Ben, you know, he was telling Michelle that he was sorry for all the causes that happened. Michelle winds up getting into a huge car collision accident. And she got knocked out of the road and remains unconscious. She wakes up inside a concrete room chained to a wall. You know, her head was bleeding and she just got a fractured leg only to find out that she was allegedly saved by a man named Howard Stabler who was played by John Goodman he explains to her that a major chemical attack had occurred and was taking place throughout the entire town killing several people that luckily enough due to his paranoia he found her outside of the road, picked her up, and saved her by putting her inside his bunker. Then, Michelle meets another survivor named Emmett, who's played by John Gallagher Jr., who just has a broken arm, and witnessed the attack that happened and was fled inside Howard's bunker. So, even though she was inside a concrete room, that looks almost like a jail cell. And yeah, she only has a bed with a lamp, and also has um, an air duct vent that actually that actually brings in all the uh, air federation unit that um, you know, has air conditioning. She was about to light up on fire by taking that one vent that's filled with. Um, you know, morphine and, and she, you know, she wanted to escape 
trying to find out uh, who Howard really is. Emmett also lives um, inside the storage room filled with lots of food and he sleeps there. And during the next day, he was about to um, you know, just have a conversation. They decided to, pre to prepare for dinner. But inside the entire uh, bunker, it was just like a dream house. Like a 50s and 60s uh, type of dream house. That's filled with um, a nice kitchen. Has a nice living room that has uh, pretty much everything that he had stored up. Like he has uh, a CD jukebox, a VCR with a DVD player, a TV, uh, coffee tables, uh, beautiful couch very, that's very comfortable, lots of books, yeah, cabinets, uh, you name it, even board games too. So he has everything stored up like. Uh, a nice dream house. So during dinner, already you know feeling very suspicious about Howard, Michelle decided to steal Howard's keys and tries to escape. You know, just when uh, Emma was just making some jokes, you know, cracking up and making a conversation between them, you know, Howard wasn't interested. She then discovers a woman named Leslie who actually has. Um, a skin condition and she wanted to get inside but Howard refuses but when she finally dies Michelle realized that Howard was right the whole time and decided to stay for like maybe a couple weeks or perhaps <laughs> maybe a long time so the entire trio has been living underground and Michelle finds out that Howard actually has a daughter named Megan. That is until the air ferration unit had broke down and Howard asks Michelle to climb through the air ducts to reset the system. Little did we know, we begin to find some very suspicions between Howard and his daughter because by the time she went up there, she saw a window that actually has the word help scratch on and then there was a bloody earring so that's where we discovered the secret behind Howard and his daughter and all the rest that happened because he might be as we speak a dangerous man so in order to escape Michelle decided to use a radiation suit that she decided to build from scratch um, with the help of Emmett so that way you know before something bad happens you know because you know what what's going to happen after um, Howard definitely hurts her or even hurts Emmett too that she wants to escape before something mysterious happens outside and I'm not going to give away the suspense or what happens uh, at the end of the movie. But all I can say is this was a well-made thriller. That's actually done very well. And it didn't disappoint me one bit. I, I thought it exactly how the film was going to be. But I had to say the film definitely has a very stellar cast. I thought John Goodman did a very good job playing a very suspicious, creepy role of his. I mean, you never even know if he was going to be a good man or a completely psychopath. But either way, you know, he was definitely paranoid about what's going to happen next. That pretty much frightens everybody. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, a very wonderful actress, did a very good job in you know, portraying Michelle because she's definitely has taken the risk you know, trying to get out of this uh, bunker you know, after that accident that she had and then even though he wasn't uh, certain if, if Howard was telling the truth or not because after all Howard did actually show her um, outside of of his farmhouse and discovered that there were two 
dead pigs, and and of course even the Leslie. So they knew something bad was going to happen anyway. Like the entire the entire town is like filled with uh, tons of chemicals that's affecting the air, so it's contaminated. So that's where it's becoming a, a, a huge major problem. And, but Mary Elizabeth Winstead, um, you know, th this is given a very strong lead right there. I mean, she's trying to do her best to survive out in the entire town. I mean, she's given everything that she was doing to prepare herself. And there you go. Also, John Gallagher Jr., I thought he was great. You know, just plain, just a typical guy, even though he loves to crack jokes and conversations and all that stuff. He's actually a very nice guy. I mean, he knew about what Howard really is. I mean, because Howard is indeed, had worked at the Navy. He built the entire bunker by scratch, mostly so he can protect himself, along with uh, many survivors out there, because they know that this guy is trying to save them. From getting killed, and before we know what's really going on, and also um, it was great to hear Bradley Cooper's voice in the film, even though it was really strange that uh, <laughs> that he was being credited in the movie because we never even know that if it was really him on the phone. But but he was chosen mostly because of you know J.J. Abrams. So that was good. It, it was really very intense uh, thriller. It didn't disappoint me at all. And I knew what was going to happen next. And the ending, which, once again, I'm not giving it away. I was actually uh, one of the few people out there who actually enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was done completely right. I knew it was going to happen after all of this so so if, if they didn't show that then <laughs> then we know that he's not telling the truth at all so. but it definitely had a backlash um, from what I heard uh, from people who have seen the movie so. but like I said the whole film didn't uh, disappoint me at all it just works I love the score that's done by Bear McCreary and the same composer who did The Walking Dead and just recently the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Wow, I mean, he actually creates a, a very chilling uh, score that sort of resembles to the film Psycho. Yeah, because I noticed the, the very chilling score that's very similar to it and it creates that atmosphere that the film was going to go for. And also some beautiful cinematography by Jeff Cutler. Jeff Cutter. I mean, he definitely took the approach to make it look like a very suspense sci-fi thriller. Some beautiful atmosphere of some dark tones and some lighter tones. I mean, like the dark tones are actually late at night, while the other shots are just in a bright... Uh, in a very bright light, mostly because all the the electronics and all this other stuff, even the lights, are actually connected to a generator from the bunker. So there you go. So, out of its 15 million budget that the film received, because this was an ultra low budget film, it earned more money at the box office. It was a huge success, and and I'm glad it worked. I, it just it was so intriguing the way it was done so J.J. Abrams did a great job producing the film with the help of Matt Reeves and Dan Trackenberg seeing that this is his screen debut did a great job directing this movie and, and it works I really enjoyed it so check out 10 Cloverfield Lane and I give that film 4 stars I'm Joseph A. Saboro and I'll see you later. Bye.